Kotak Nifty India Tourism Index Fund Can you capitalize on India's growing tourism sector through smart investing? Is the booming tourism industry in India a gateway to solid investment returns? Let's find out through an in-depth analysis of the Kotak Nifty India Tourism Index Fund in this video. Hi Welcome to holisticinvestment.in. We help individual investors like you to make the right financial and investment decisions to reach your financial goals in a more faster and smarter way. Now, before analyzing whether investing in the Kotak Nifty India Tourism Index Fund will be a good fit for our investment portfolio or not, let us first understand a few basic details about this NFO. So, as an NFO, it starts on 2nd September 2024 and ends on 16th September 2024. And some of its key features are it belongs to the equity scheme thematic and it is an open-ended fund type which has Nifty India Tourism TRI as its benchmark index. And the minimum amount you need to start investing in this fund is just 100 rupees. And the fund managers for this NFO are Mr. Devendra Singhal, Mr. Satish Dondapati and and Mr. Abhishek Bisan. There is no exit load for this fund. Now let's take a look at the investment philosophy and the investment objective of this fund. So the investment philosophy of this fund is that this fund follows a passive management approach which aims to replicate the performance of the Nifty India Tourism and Allied Index. So this philosophy is based on the belief that the tourism industry in India is poised for significant growth due to increasing domestic and international travel, rising disposable incomes and government initiatives. So by investing in a diversified portfolio of tourism related companies, this fund seeks to capitalize on this sector's long term growth potential without active stock picking. And the investment objective, the primary investment objective of this fund is to generate returns to the investors which closely correspond to the performance of the Nifty India Tourism Index. So the fund aims to provide investors with broad based exposure to companies in the tourism, hospitality and related industries including airlines, hotels, travel services, entertainment companies. So by mirroring the index, the fund seeks to deliver returns in line with the overall growth of the tourism sector in India while minimizing tracking error. So this makes it an attractive option for investors who believe in the long term potential of the tourism sector but prefers a hands off low cost investment approach. So that's why the scheme might be suitable for an aggressive investor who was bullish on investing in the new trends and the emerging sector. Now as we have understood a few basic details about this fund. So now let's take a look at the Nifty India Tourism Index which aims to track the performance of stocks from the Nifty 500 Index which represents the travel and tourism theme. So the largest 30 stocks from the eligible basic industries are selected based on on six month average free float market capitalization. So the weight of each stock is in the index in base on its free float market capitalization. So this index can be used for a variety of purposes such as benchmarking fund portfolios, launching of index funds, ETFs and other structured products. So as we can see there are sectors represented under this index are consumer services, services and consumer durables where the highest weightage is given to the consumer services sector with a weightage of 62.53% while the lowest weightage is given to the consumer durables with a weightage of 2.91%. Now let's take a look at the top 10 holdings, top 10 companies in this index. So they are Interglobe Aviation Limited, Indian Hotel School Limited, GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited, Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation Limited, Jubilant Foodworks Limited, EIH Limited, Lamentary Hotels Limited, Limited, Safai Foods India Limited, Devyani International Limited, Charlotte Hotels Limited. So in these companies, the highest weightage, the first place is given to the Interglobe Aviation Limited with a weightage of 19.76% while the top 10 company's position is given to the Charlotte Hotels Limited with a weightage of 2.40%. So now if you look at the returns as on July 31st, 2024, till then in one year it has produced a return of 49.57% in five years 
it has given returns of 25.17% while since inception it has given a return of 12.63%. So if you look at the graph it has consistently performed well in the long term compared to the short term. So it, this might be suitable for a long term investment. Now as we have understood some basic details about this NFO and this index. Now let's start in analyzing whether investing in the Kotak Nifty India Tourism Index Fund will be a good fit for investment portfolio or not by analyzing the pros and cons of investing in this fund. So let's start with the pros. So first of all exposure to a higher growth sector like first up this fund gives you exposure to the Indian tourism sector which is expected to grow significantly in the coming years. So as tourism bounces back companies within this index could see substantial gains and also diversified investment across key players. So secondly this fund offers diversification across major tourism related companies reducing the risk tied to any single stock and there is also a th the third thing is the potential for long term gain. So if you are a long term investor the growth potential of the tourism in industry makes this fund a strong candidate for substantial returns over time. Lastly low cost passive investing. So since it is a passively managed index fund it generally comes with lower fees making it a cost effective investment option. So if this new trend and emerging sector performs and delivers good returns then it will definitely boost the overall returns in your investment portfolio as well as this fund applies the high risk and high return concept like the higher the risk you take the potential higher returns you might get potentially. So this might be suitable for an aggressive investor who is bullish on the new trends and emerging sectors. Now let's take a look at the cons. So because it's equally important to know the drawbacks as well when you are choosing to invest in something. So now let's take a look at the cons. So first of all uh, one of the major drawbacks is the sector specific risk. The tourism industry is vulnerable to factors like economic downturns, pandemics or geopolitical tensions which could directly impact your investment. And next limited diversification. While it is diversified within the tourism sector it lacks broader market diversification. So if the tourism sector underperforms the entire fund could struggle. And there is no active management because it is a, a passively managed fund. So since it is passively managed you won't have a fund manager actively making decisions based on market conditions which could be a disadvantage in volatile times. So when the market is volatile if you are making active decisions based on the market conditions it can be huge advantage but since it is a passively managed index fund that's not possible which is a major drawback here. Next is the potential volatility. So this fund could be more volatile than broader index funds especially in uncertain times making it riskier for conservative investors. So suppose if this new trend and emerging sector underperforms it could also impact the returns in your overall investment portfolio because it has a high concentration risk. That's why investing in a thematic fund like this needs good timing and circle of competence should be on our side. So these are some of the major drawbacks of investing in this fund. You need to consider all these factors before choosing to invest in it. See the final analysis from this fund is so from our analysis what is the final takeaway if we see it is that this is not a big enough friendly fund to invest in. So if you are a first time investor or if you are even a conservative investor who is not willing to take a lot of risk then th you must avoid investing in this fund because to invest in the thematic fund like this you need to know uh, some kind of knowledge about the market. Sufficient knowledge to know the market timing to perfectly time it and then invest it to reap the potential gains but if you are just beginning to invest this might not be a potentially suitable fund for you and if you are still wanting to invest in this fund then you can definitely choose to invest in an existing new trends and emerging sectors kind of thematic fund which is similar to this with a track record. Because with a track record at least like of track record of 7 to 10 years you have the track record uh, where you can see how it has performed in the highs and how it has performed in the lows and then take a calculated risk. But here in an NFO we do not know what kind of risk we are taking, how much risk we are taking so it's better if you choose not to invest in an NFO like this. And also this fund is not suitable for to add to your core investment portfolio because core investment portfolio is there for you to achieve your main financial goals. Suppose 
suppose if this fund underperforms or is not performing well it can impact the returns in your overall investment portfolio as well so if you do want to invest in it invest it through your satellite portfolio or if you have surplus money invest it with a minimum investment amount on a trial basis but do not invest it through your core investment portfolio and also as i have already mentioned that to invest in a thematic fund like this you need to have sufficient knowledge about market and uh, to time the market perfectly so you can know when to enter when the tourism industry is booming and when to exit before it uh, underperforms or something but if you don't know when to an enter and exit from a thematic fund like this it's better if you do not invest in it because it might not be suitable for you but before investing it's better if you have some f- uh, professional guidance for you to invest it through because a uh, consulting with your professional financial planner will uh, help them find suitability for investment objective risk profile overlap ratio and allocation of your investment portfolio and the investment portfolio of the fund you want to invest in so they will be able to analyze and look at all the factors and help you make a informed and better investment decision so it can make your investment journey more hassle free and smooth for you and helpful for you in the long run so it's better if you invest it through a professional guidance as well if you want to gain more professional guidance through a professional financial planner you can choose to book a one on one complimentary consultation with one of our professional financial planner through the link in the description Also if you want to gain more investment and financial insights through the leading experts in the finance industry we also conduct a regularly free live webinars through which you can register and gain these insights the link is in the description also uh, if you like this video definitely hit like and subscribe to youtube channel so we can come up with more such financially beneficial content for you thank you for watching